In a given year, more than 350 million metric tons of plastic waste is produced. Of this, an estimated 5 to 10 million tons finds its way into the ocean, resulting in the overwhelming majority of marine pollution. Not only that, but even properly disposed of plastics find a way to stick around long after they're intended. These processes collectively contribute to the generation of microplastics, which are defined as plastic particles smaller than 5 millimeters in size. The concern with microplastics primarily revolves around synthetic plastics that do not readily biodegrade into the environment, such as polyethylene and polypropylene. These plastics break down into smaller particles over time and can accumulate into the environment, potentially entering the food chain and ultimately being consumed by humans. One promising alternative to synthetic plastics is in the form of polyhydroxyalkanoates. To keep things simple, let's refer to them as PHAs. PHAs are biodegradable plastics derived from natural sources like plant oils. They're designed to break down more readily in natural environments, including industrial composting facilities and soil, through the action of microorganisms. As a result, PHAs do not persist in the environment in the same way as traditional synthetic plastics. One brand of PHA that we'll look into today is called Nodax. Nodax is made by Dynamer Scientific, a biotechnology company known for its development and production of biodegradable plastics. Dynamer uses a process called fermentation to create Nodax. First, the canola seeds are planted, then harvested for their seed. The harvest is then taken to a cold pressing processing plant where the seeds are crushed without the use of solvents. There is no waste in this part of the cycle. All of the canola crop is utilized from the oil cold crushed from the seed to the byproduct that is repurposed into livestock feed and fertilizer. Next, the canola oil proceeds to a bioreactor where it is combined with microorganisms, water, energy, and oxygen to support fermentation. PHA is produced in a controlled environment that's optimal for maximum fermentation and PHA production. Pure white PHA powder results from the separation, purification, and drying. Biopolymer PHA resin pellets are then created through a reactive extrusion process. This process is approved by the FDA for food contact use. So, Almost anything currently made out of plastic can be made from these PHA resin pellets. The pelletized resins are boxed for shipment to brand partners worldwide. These brand partners then use the resins to create all kinds of containers, bottles, boxes, packaging, utensils, vessels, films, coatings, inks, etc. All products that are created with this PHA resin base are certifiably biodegradable by all six world standards. So soil, salt water, fresh water, aerobic and anaerobic industrial compost, and home compost. All materials from Danimer's PHA degrade entirely into the soil and or water within 12 to 18 weeks. This process creates a full circle with the end result being soil ready to again receive seeds. No toxins are used or created during the manufacturing of these PHA biopolymers. So, in a nutshell, Danimer's Nodax is a biodegradable, renewable plastic that is helping to reduce the environmental impact of traditional plastics. Now, given the nature of this channel, let's take a look behind the scenes at Danimer's financials. Danimer's PHA revenue growth is up 63% year over year with a major contract coming online in the second half of this year. This will bring the new facility up to 70 to 80% capacity, which is expected to triple sales by early to mid-2025. At the time of recording, Danimer's market cap is trading in the range of $65 million. PHA revenue in the first quarter was $8.2 million. Now, we'll multiply this by four to bring us to the current annual run rate which is just north of $32 million. Now, if PHA sales are expected to triple, we can take this annual run rate and multiply it by three, landing us just shy of $100 million. So taking Danimer's market cap, aka the price, and the forward sales, 
and dividing the two brings us to a forward price to sales for Danimer of 0.66. By comparison, the average historic price to sales for the NASDAQ is between 1.5 and 3.5. So if Danimer were to be re-rated to trade in line with the NASDAQ, Danimer would align to be in the range of 147 to 343 million dollars. This would reflect an increase of 127 to 429 percent. So comparing the market cap to the revenue alone seems too good to be true. So let's keep digging. Not only is top line expected to do well, but Danimer is also guiding to be adjusted EBITDA profitable by early 2025. As of March 31st, Danimer's equity value is $256 million. So taking their market cap of $65 million, this arrives us at a price to book value of 0.25. Now for reference, a price to book of less than one is generally considered to be undervalued. Danimer's price to book value at one would reflect a price appreciation of 295%. So again, this sounds too good to be true. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at Danimer's red flags, three in particular. We have the management, customer concentration, and funding. So starting with the management, on the 20th of May, CEO Stephen Crosscree announced that he will be retiring after eight and a half years of service, though he does plan to continue serving on Danimer's board. The uncertainty surrounding Danimer's next CEO is one of many factors that are likely to be causing the stock to be trading at a discount. For concentration, this is in the form of the revenue surge being primarily driven by one customer. While a tripling in revenue sounds great over the next year, it's important to consider what revenue would look like if that one customer decided to pull the plug. Finally, let's look at Danimer's funding. In November of 2021, Danimer broke ground on a facility in Bainbridge, Georgia, and subsequently suspended the construction a year later due to financing issues. Danimer will need to obtain additional funding to complete this facility, which has an engineering cost estimate of five to $600 million. This new facility is expected to produce 125 million pounds of Nodax-based products annually. Translated to revenue, this is a little shy of $400 million per year. So to refresh, the current PHA revenue rate is at $32.6 million and is expected to triple to $98 million in the first half of 2025. Adding this revenue to that of a new facility would effectively bring this $65 million company to a revenue range of $450 to $500 million annually. Now, as of March 31st, Danimer has $72 million in liquidity, with a quarterly burn rate of roughly $15 million. If we extrapolate this forward, we can expect Danimer to run out of liquidity around the middle of 2025. It's important to mention that Danimer is in the final stages of the DOE loan program process, though the terms and the magnitude of the loan are yet to be detailed. So putting this all together paints a picture of why Danimer Scientific is trading at a discount. It's not because it's some hidden gem that the market is yet to discover, it's because it has a high risk to reward profile. So in closing, Danimer is a very important company, but they are very much in financial distress. And in my opinion, the probability of the stock 2xing is on par with the stock going to zero. So with so much uncertainty surrounding the stock, it seems like the market has priced it as such. Thank you guys for hanging out. Leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to check out the Patreon, and I'll see you in the next one. Have an awesome day. Peace.